The surprising thing that I've noticed about the 16 personalities and Anima and Aminus, uh, the men and the women, is that most people tend to build their idea of what a man is based on what they, as if they are men, are, right? So whatever you are as a man is what men are supposed to do and what men are supposed to be like. And whatever the opposite of that is, that's how women are supposed to act like. So what I'm starting to see as I travel across the world is different forms of cultural ideas and filters have come about, right? In certain cultures, men are supposed to be extroverts. And in other cultures like Sweden, men are supposed to be introverts. And here you find all these refined ways to express being a man as an introvert or these defined and nuanced ways to be a masculine extrovert, right? So you can be the stoic and calm and logical and rational man that women come to rest on and find it pendable and quiet and good at listening. Or you can be that dominant and aggressive and assertive guy that, you know, is able to speak out for themselves and take charge of the group and get people going, right? And so people are finding these kinds of strategies and they start coding everything. We tend to code everything as masculine and feminine. We've been doing it since the dawn of man. We've been coding and categorizing our entire reality into this masculine and feminine lens. But this masculine and feminine lens is so often shaped by your 16 personalities type. So if you're an INFJ and a man, you tend to assume that all INFJs are manly and to be an INFJ is to be manly. That's at least assuming normal development, right? Now, something has changed in modern society and probably it's a sign of social media taking over because this is no longer absolutely the truth, right? So what we're starting to see is more and more people start to have questions and doubts about whether they are men or women, right? So a lot of this is because the voice of social media and newsletters and images online are starting to take over our consciousness to the point where we no longer have our own inner voice, our own inner compass. And now, instead of making our own decisions about what we think a man should do, what a man should be like, now we are looking to social media to tell us what a man should be like and what a man should do. And here we get into these traps because so many of us end up feeling like we're broken or wrong or like we're not doing the way I suppose a person is supposed to do, right? So INFP men like feel like they're not manly because they feel that men are supposed to have more ESTJ-like characteristics, for example, and <laughs> women INFPs end up feeling like they're not women enough because a woman, a true woman, a good woman is supposed to have other kinds of qualities or characteristics. And these are, of course, all shaped by, you know, things that we are constantly consuming on a daily basis. So if you constantly eat at McDonald's, you know, that's going to shape your body and how you look at your body and how you look at yourself, right? And similarly, if we eat and diet off social media and TikTok every single day, that's going to shape the, con the creators that we look at, the people that we compare ourselves to, that's going to shape our idea of what a man and woman is. So now we end up in a weird, weird, weird spot. And what I sort of find that based on this is that we have the cultural anima and animus and we have the personal individual anima and animus, right? So the anima and animus, they were Carl Jung's ideas of the masculine and the feminine, right? So he said that every single person has inside themselves the conscious masculine or feminine and the unconscious masculine and feminine, right? And the argument here is then that women have the feminine nature conscious and the masculine nature unconscious and that men have the masculine nature conscious and the feminine nature unconscious. But there are so many things that can happen here based on your 16 personalities type. You might end up assuming a lot of things based on how your experiences were growing up and what your male or female role models were like, right? So often we tend to look and compare ourselves to our family and that's not a bad strategy. In the past growing up, we mostly developed our own identity by comparing ourselves to our family members, right? And that's changed a lot today since we nowadays have teachers and a lot more adult role models around us. We have uh, also beyond that, you know, people on the television like shaping what we start to think of as the ideal man or the ideal fem female or woman, right? So these things are becoming more and more prevalent now. So suddenly this causes a shift because typically we tend to have a lot in common with our parents. We might not want to say that we do, but in general, people have most of their DNA from their 
mother and father, right? And of course, to some extent, their grandparents. And of course, the grandparents tend to take an active role in the rising of the kid too, right? They also become role models to the kid, right? But now we're comparing ourselves to people that are and can be very different from us in our values and in our behavior and our identity and in what we do. Of course, to both a positive and negative, because these days we can choose our own role models, right? So if we have a terrible dad or a terrible mom, right, and we really struggle with this, if we have and if our closest role models and teachers are a poor example of what a man or a woman should be, right? What ends up happening is we can choose to find other role models, other examples that we think are better examples. But of course, there's conflicts here too, right? So say you're an ESTJ and uh, you're an ESTJ woman in today's society and everything you do, you know, everything you say, you know, everything that you are is constantly codified as womanly, right? So when you as a woman speak out for what it is that you want or set goals or stand up for yourself, people say you're being hysteric, right? Or that you're being emotional or that you're being irrational, right? When you're like, no, I thought about this logically. I made a plan. I worked from this step by step and I worked hard for this and I put in a lot of effort. And here a lot of people say, well, I'm not sure like uh, I can trust you. Uh, I don't know if I can trust your source. I don't know if I can defer to your expertise. I prefer to listen to this guy, right? So <laughs> here, you know, you end up in these kind of weird situations. And of course, like imagine you're an INFP guy, for example, and you end up in a situation where like, you're a great listener. You have it in you to be an amazing healer. You have it in you to be highly introspective and highly emotionally sensitive and attuned to yourself and your own feelings and the feelings of other people. You are supposed to, and you can give and create a sense of calm for any single person. You can help be a point of refuge for everyone. You can make weirdos feel accepted. You can make people feel like they can be themselves. You can give and create the space of creativity where people are allowed to think freely and challenge their own thinking and learn new things, right? But imagine you think that, oh, but as a man, I'm not supposed to be like that, right? As a man, I'm supposed to be tough and assertive and dominant and controlling and pushy and aggressive, right? So I'm supposed to be a different kind of person than what I am, right? So you can end up in this weird spot where it's like, you know, yes, that's what I would like to do, but actually this is what I have to do. As a man, this is who I have to be, right? And of course, the obvious answer here is quite simple. You have to get in touch with your own inner voice, right? Because the truth is, you know, you can't change biological reality to an extent, right? So you can definitely question social stereotypes around being a man or being a woman, but you can't change this, uh, this biological reality, the fact that you were born with an XY or an XX chromosome, right? So that's something that is your medical reality, right? So that means you need a different form of medicine. That means you have a different experience with your sexuality and your body and with how your body develops and all those things, right? And, that's the tough part, right? Because, uh, yeah, like what we have to do, what I think would be the ideal would be if everyone were allowed to define and create their own version of masculinity or femininity. Imagine we could see, you know, the female scientist as, you know, <laughs> such a person because she's a female and because she's a scientist, she is a female scientist, right? And because he's a male and he's a scientist, he's a male scientist, right? Imagine we could do that. Imagine we could learn to think multiple thoughts at the same time. Imagine instead of trying to enforce two ideals of who to be and how to be like, you know, instead of trying to categorize everyone in the world into two genders and two stereotypes and expectations, imagine we could have multiple versions of masculinity or multiple versions of femininity and imagine that every single person were allowed to define that for themselves, right? And imagine instead of trying to discredit people based on their body or their gender or their sexuality, imagine we just listen to the content, the merit of their ideas or what it is that they were doing, right? So instead of trying to force other people to act according to your cultural expectations or based on what the people and role models in your life were like, right? Instead of trying to get other people to behave according to that, imagine that we said for ourselves, this is what I want for myself. You, you guys, you can want whatever you want for yourselves, right? That's what I think about how the 16 personalities should relate to anima and animus. I think there is much more to this though. Like I think when you think about the anima and animus for men and women, I think we have to think about 
how do we look at men and women, right? Because so much of what I hear in the feminist debate around 16 personalities is a result of people's own personal experiences, right? So we think it's politics, and of course there are structures there, but a lot of the time, even if there is structural realities, there's also individual realities, right? And so everything that you experience about men and women is a result of what you've experienced as a man or woman, right? So your relationships to men, your relationships to women, or a direct result of what your parents were like, what the other men or what your brothers and si sisters were like, you know. These become what shapes what you think about men and women. So if you feel like, you know, you don't like men or you don't like women, and that's gonna be the case regardless of if you're a man or a woman. Like there's men that don't like men, right? And there's women that don't like women, right? So imagine if that's the case. Like often what it means to be in touch with the feminine as a man or what it means to be in touch with the masculine as a man, it means, as a woman, right? It means that uh, you've learned to develop a positive relationship to men. You've learned to find men and male role models that you find inspiring and worthwhile and cool and fascinating. And you've learned to find, of course, on the other end, feminine role models that you find fascinating and interesting, you know, regardless of what it is that they're talking about. They can be biologists like Helen Fisher, or they can be, you know, People like uh, Marie-Louise from France, who <laughs> is responsible for a lot of my understanding of Carl Jung today, right? Uh, regardless of what kind of role models you find, because most of <laughs> my <laughs> female role models are, of course, uh, women that are either extremely empathetic or extremely intelligent or extremely, <laughs> you know, interesting, because that's what I look for, that's what I enjoy in other people in general, right? The same as, and the same goes for the male role models in my life. They're people that are highly empathetic, in touch with themselves and with others, humanistic and positive in how they look at life because, you know, that's how, and that's what I like in people, right? So we tend to like and build relationships to other people based on commonalities, things that we find that we like about them, right? Now, if we make men as a woman, if you make men the opposite of whatever it is that you are, right? And imagine then that you had a bad male role model in your life, like maybe you didn't like your father or you had brothers in your life that, or bullies in your life that you didn't really like, you know, and this caused you to look bad at men, like it caused you to really struggle with men and feeling safe around men and feeling like you could be yourself around men, like, and also those things, right? So imagine that happened, right? Well, what can end up happening is, say you're an INFJ girl, you might end up feeling like ESTP men suck, right? And you might feel like all men are like ESTPs. And you might end up feeling like, you know, everyone that behaves like an ESTP is behaving like a man. And you might end up also so associating that ESTP personality type with a level of toxicity or unhealthiness, even though this is just a normal way to be and a natural and positive way of thinking about and approaching the world. If this happens, what you might need to do is you might think about what it, the positive qualities can be of these personal types and you might think of ways to work with them and ways to embrace the complementary nature of these differences and to think about what it is that they can show you, what it is that they can do for you and what it is that you can benefit from their, common, uh, their company, right? And you can learn that, hey, if I'm allowed to be myself and to express myself as who I am and they allow me to do that, and I allow them to do that. I think we're gonna have a quite a harmonious relationship, right? And we're gonna get to know each other better and we're both gonna express ourselves more naturally and more authentically with one another. And as a result of that, there's gonna be a much stronger possibility for connection, right? That's the ideal I think everyone has to think about, right? You have to think about what is your opposite personality type and to which extent do, I, do you attribute that to being masculine or being feminine? And how do you identify and what, how do you define masculinity and femininity for yourself? And how do you relate to these qualities? And then you have to flip it and think about, instead of if you have a negative idea of these things, or if you have an overly positive or idealized version of this, you have to think about, you know, what is this person as a human being, you know? Flaws and strengths as a whole package, right? Because it can also be the case that we idealize the feminine or idealize the masculine. Like a lot of people look to the feminine as the most perfect, ideal way for everyone to be and they feel like everyone should be like that. And some people look at men as, the ideal, like how everyone should be and how everyone should act and how everyone should think. Or perhaps they feel like, you know, the only people that are worth my time are other men. The only people I would ever listen to, the only people I would ever consider, the only people who I would ever empathize with are other men, right? If that's the case, like if we have these kind of idealized fixations and so on, 
<laughs> what we have to think about here is why do I have these things? Why do I end up with these kind of ideas? And what made, what brought this up inside me? And what can I do to strive to a more, a more objective way of looking at it? Because if we idealize something, of course, that's also going to mean we're going to be more likely to be manipulated, right? So we're going to be more sensitive to masculine coded advertising. We're going to be more likely to spend money on people just because they are, and the products are promoted by men. We're going to, you know, be more likely to subscribe to a certain ideology or certain belief system just because other men seem to do it, right? So <laughs> here, you know, you become hypnotized, you know. What does it mean to be hypnotized? Like when you say the same thing over and over again, but change the wording slightly, you know, you become hypnotized by something, right? So you can be possessed by the masculine or the feminine, right? To the extent where it's like, this becomes your model of reality and the way that you think everything should be. And this is how you think about it, right? Men should dominate and rule the world. Men should decide who, how we feel about everything. Men should decide how we all think about the world, right? Or of course, on the other hand, you know, women should do it. Women should uh, have everything right. Men are always wrong. Men are always bad. Men are always bullshit, right? That can also happen, right? So what you have to do then is break out of the hypnosis, right? By learning to challenge yourself to experience and go outside your comfort zone, right? Because it can be to go outside your comfort zone to interact with the other gender. Say you're a man and you've never really talked to women. You never really interacted with women besides perhaps your mom or perhaps in a relationship setting or on a sexual basis, you know, to get laid or to, you know, meet your date or partner, right? And so you don't know what to talk about, you know. How do I interact with a woman? What do I say to her? What do I do with her? Like, does a woman want and how does a woman think about the world, right? And if you don't understand this, you know, right? if you don't know this, it's going to be very hard to empathize with women too. So if a woman says, you know, I've had a bad experience or something bad has happened, there's going to be a chance that you don't listen, you don't believe it, you don't understand it. Well, because you don't understand how she talks, you don't understand her language, you haven't come to understand who she is and you know this is hilarious in its own way well it's of course sad but it's also hilarious in its own way because you know ultimately women are just human right <laughs> we're both human uh, both genders are ultimately human right so gender is certainly an important aspect of who we are but it's just one chromosome right so still there is a lot more chromosomes to go there's a lot more to have in common a lot more to understand a lot more to connect on than just gender right so when we subscribe to this genderified model of reality where everything can be divided into men and women and where all men are supposed to be one way and all women are supposed to be one way, right? When we have this model of reality, it's very different from the 16 personalities model of reality because the 16 personalities model of reality suggests there's 16 ways to be, right? And of course, it's a number. It's, it allows for a lot more variety. It allows for a lot more nuance. It allows people to express and experience who they are because suddenly you can be an INTP and a woman and you can find like that's groundbreaking and that's revolutionary for you or as an INTJ woman like, you might feel like wow huh that explains why some people don't think I'm a manly enough or why I don't feel like I fit in with the masculine or like with the feminine ideal because you know as a woman I'm supposed to be in my culture where I grew up as a woman I'm supposed to be more emotional right well actually I think in the Netherlands I think women are supposed to be a little bit more ITJ-ish, right? So actually in the Netherlands, you'd do just fine. You'd feel like you were quite a woman, right? In your own way, because of who you are, right? So that's the weird thing about the cultural aspect of it. When you go outside this two-ified model and you go to the 16 personalities, definitely it's eye-opening to realize that, well, actually there's more, many other ways to be than just these two ways, right? So. Often when I talk about people who, with top people that don't know personality psychology, they say, oh, it's such a man thing to say. It's such a man thing to do, Eric. You know, that's such a guy thing, right? Or it's typical. Yeah, men are always like that. Yeah, I, guys are, you, you guys, you know, you're just like this, right? So whenever I talk to people that don't know their personality psychology, you know, they don't believe in astrology. They don't believe in the 16 personalities. They don't believe in personality psychology, but they believe that the entire world can be divided into two kinds of people, men and women, and that everything that you do as a man is manly and everything women do is womanly, right? <laughs> Don't you see the ridiculousness? Of I think uh, ultimately what you have to do is just think about uh, how you can like and appreciate yourself for who you are, right? How can I be comfortable with my own body, with my own sexual identity, with my own gender, with my own ethnicity, with my culture, with where I grew up, with uh, 
my personality and with my own unique way of being, with my identity and relationship to men and women, like how can I learn to develop all these things and improve all these things? Because ultimately, you know, we're not looking for, you know, everyone to become like a man or a woman, right? We're looking to have deep and fulfilling relationships. We're looking to have deep connections with others. We're looking to be able to express our identity and who we are. We're looking to better get to know ourselves. We're looking to, you know, appreciate ourselves more to be less critical of ourselves, to be less likely to judge or force ourselves and other people to fit certain expectations and ideals and cultural norms, and to create more room for individual expression. At least that's my goal. Let me know what you thought in the, about the video, and thank you so much for supporting my Patreon channel. This is a Patreon exclusive video, and uh, yeah, I'll try to make more of those because I've, we can have a lot more in-depth discussions together like this. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.